Hello, say shut up. Have you ever heard of losing weight by thinking? Or the brain burning up to 6,000 calories in a day through complex activities like playing chess at a high level? When hearing those stories, people who don't like physical exercise probably start dreaming. Well, is it really possible to burn calories, I don't know, playing complex video games or reading difficult books or studying for exams? Unfortunately, this is just a myth. And today we'll explain to you the origin of this misconception that is widely disseminated on the internet. And then we'll see how you can really use your brain intelligently. It is a myth that a chess grandmaster can burn 6 thousand calories in a day. Every now and then, impressive stories go viral about the brain burning thousands of calories per day. A responsible entity spreading this myth was ESPN, one of the largest media networks in the world. And ESPN has told stories of chess masters who can lose several pounds by burning up to 6,000 calories in a competition. For credibility, ESPN cited Robert Sapolsky, who is a professor at the esteemed Stanford University. Sapolsky specializes in neurobiology, physiology, and anthropology. But do all these titles allow us to conclude that every single thing that Sapolsky says is correct? For clarity in our reasoning, we need to pause here and recall two particular episodes of the series Hello, Say Chat Up. In the episode number 254, we explain that even good people can have bad ideas. That is, even a very prestigious scholar can also make mistakes. Now, in the episode number 255, we discuss the fact that awards don't mean really much. It is an error of reasoning to be convinced simply because someone has a degree, a certificate, or award. Awards are practically worthless to validate an argument. For example, imagine that you're making a well-founded argument on a health topic, and then a doctor listens to what you say and then asks if you have a degree in medicine to be able to talk about that topic. Now, since you are not a doctor, it is best to keep quiet and just listen to those who are trained in the field. This implies an argumentum ab auctoritate, it is a Latin term that describes basically when someone pulls rank on you. It is an attempt to win an argument by presenting credentials and authority titles rather than actually discussing the matter at hand. And an argument from authority is a dangerous instrument for silencing free thought. Simply having prestigious titles or being viewed as a brilliant person is not a guarantee of anything. You cannot naively believe that an intelligent, award-winning person always has good ideas. So when I was reading this ESPN story, I was surprised to find this amount of 6,000 calories burned in a single day. It is an astounding amount. So I went looking for more details. And indeed, 10 minutes and precisely 15 seconds into a recorded presentation at Stanford, Sapolsky does mention chess grandmasters who go through six to seven thousand calories a day and the problem is that that talk is kind of informal and it touches on many different subjects when speaking of the grandmasters sapolsky doesn't cite the source of that information so i went through sapolsky's books and then i found a footnote that mentions leroy dubeck's work as the definitive study on chess players in 1971, Dubeck noticed that some markers in chess players had tripled, such as breathing and muscle contraction. Hence, the impression that he gives, maybe, is that Sapolsky extrapolated and deduced more or less the following. Well, if a normal person burns 2,000 calories in a day, a grandmaster would triple that to burn 6,000, maybe. If this was the reasoning used, well, it would be an example of a bad idea by a very good person. Calorie burning measuring devices are unreliable for measuring intellectual activity. Perhaps you heard from other sources that thinking too much burns calories. Well, the brain does consume plenty of energy, we'll talk about that in a minute. The problem is that some companies have already made marketing initiatives measuring chess players' heartbeats to estimate how many calories they burned during the game. Well, here, there is a confusion of physiology. When a heart rate increases during practices with lots of muscle movements, then it is possible to estimate 
how many calories were burned from that heart rate measurement. Now, when there is no actual physical activity involved, a racing heart is not always racing because of muscle work, burning calories. An example is when the heart rate increases due to stress. The body understands stress as a situation of danger. The heart speeds up, the glucose level in the bloodstream rises, providing us a sudden surge of energy that will help us fight or flight. However, if the body remains still at this time, unable to burn glucose with muscle movement, well, stress can even make you gain fat. Today, science has made new discoveries proving it absurd to say that a person spends 6,000 calories in one day through thinking. Now, Leroy Dubeck's study is pretty old, it's from 1971, and the book that Robert Sapolsky published mentioning Dubeck's study is also kind of old, it's from 2004. So neither presents solid scientific evidence that chess players can triple their normal calorie burn. And then a little later, in 2008, a study showed that calories burn actually do go up while playing a game of chess, but the increase is practically negligible. It is worth remembering that the body remains almost without movement during a game of chess. As much as the brain of a chess master is intense reasoning, burning 6,000 calories in a competition without physical effort is an exaggeration. See, Sapolsky has a huge body of scholarly contributions with a lot of very interesting and valid information. In this case, he used outdated resources about chess players and he made a wrong claim. Let us remember what we saw in the episode 254. Good people can have bad ideas, and that's absolutely fine. The brain consumes up to 25% of our energy, but that doesn't mean that you can lose weight by thinking. Let's turn out to numbers to demystify the idea that we can lose weight by performing complex mental activities. See, the average resting adult brain burns 20 to 25 percent of the body's overall energy, especially in the form of glucose. Now that means burning 350 to 450 calories a day, which would be the equivalent of um, three to four bananas. The brain is the organ that consumes the most energy in our body. All that energy is used by the neurons in our brain communicating with each other through chemical signals that are transmitted by the cellular structures called synapses. Your brain is always thinking. Whether you are awake, asleep, watching television, or reading a book. But brain activity is not always the same. Using modern machines, scientists are now able to observe how the brain activity changes according to the tasks that we're doing. Routine activities activate one area of the brain. More creative activities activate another area of the brain. Learning new things activates another area, and so on. Now the question is, does your brain burn more energy when you're trying to think harder? The brain burns more calories, yes, when performing difficult cognitive tasks, but not much more than usual. When we talk about physical exercise, the relationship is nearly directly proportional between the effort that we make physically and then the amount of calories that we burn. A light walk uses fewer calories than a strenuous run. With the brain, this relationship doesn't happen in the same proportion, even when you're performing very, very difficult cognitive activities. When you struggle to learn something new or to tackle a difficult problem like a highly competitive game of chess, the brain regions activated by the task are given increased energy. But this increase is practically negligible, and it doesn't mean that you're burning enough calories to lose weight by thinking. It doesn't matter. If you're playing chess, or learning to play the piano, or just watching your favorite movie for the 10th time, energy consumption by the brain remains more or less constant, hardly changing the amount of the glucose that is being metabolized. And what about the tasks that require a lot of self-control, like a smoker resisting a cigarette? These are tasks that demand also a lot from our brain. But science has already refuted the thesis that self-control tasks use a lot of our glucose, they use up our glucose, leaving us without the strength to resist temptations. In fact, even that idea of a willpower being a resource that runs out through overuse is now being also questioned. You won't lose weight by thinking. But increasing your intelligence 
improves your health. You can't lose weight by reading a book, but don't be discouraged. We have some good news. Science has already proven that there is another analogy between muscles and the brain, between physical and mental exercises. That is, in the same way that your legs get stronger when you do some squats, your brain also mm, gets stronger when you have some exercise routine. Actively reading books, mastering memorization techniques, learning new skills, all of this makes your brain more developed. It is a myth that a person is born smart or stupid, remaining like that for the rest of their lives. Genetics do have an early influence. However, what defines whether a person will become smarter is what that person decides to do with their brain. On the one hand, those who perform the same passive activities, such as spending hours and hours on social media or watching television, they end up losing brain agility over time. On the other hand, those who are always learning something new, challenging themselves and doing difficult cognitive tasks end up developing their brains and increasing their own intelligence. So if your idea is to lose weight or get in shape or just overall have more health, developing your brain can help you immensely. Mentally active people are generally more informed about food, exercise and rest. Even if they're not physically active, those people have probably already developed their tools and intelligence in their brains to change their lifestyle and become healthier. Thinking doesn't help you lose weight directly. But if you train your brain, if you increase your intelligence level, you will indirectly benefit your mental and physical health. The brain consumes much of the body's energy. But science has already debunked that myth that you can burn more calories with some demanding mental tasks. It doesn't matter whether you are viewing social media or playing against the world chess champion, your brain's overall energy consumption will be about the same. Still, developing your brain and increasing your intelligence can indirectly help you to live a healthier life. And to do that, you need to subject your brain to difficult cognitive tasks, like actively reading books, mastering memorization techniques, learning new skills. In the Arata Academy Intelligence course, you learn to do all of this and more. Our course is designed to help you unleash the full potential of your intelligence. And to see a special class of the Intelligence course, you can go to arata.se forward slash intelligence.